Hello, welcome to Risky Fitness. Got another Retro Arch tutorial for you here. So this week we're going to talk about changing the default UI in Retro Arch. Now, chances are if you've downloaded Retro Arch recently, you've probably got this UI, which is called Ozone. But there are a few other UIs that you may have seen before, or you might just want to see what there is and check it out. So in order to change the UI, it's super duper simple. Just go to Settings, Drivers, and then menu and you have four choices GLUI, Ozone, RGUI or XMB. So I've already changed this to GLUI. Now we want to make sure that that actually saves, right? So go to main menu, configuration file and save current configuration. Now if you do that, in theory, when you restart RetroArch, the settings should take effect. And we're gonna try it and we're gonna see what happens. And if you look, my UI has changed. So this is now the Ozone UI. Things are a little bit different now, right? So let's go back to drivers. menu and we'll choose RGUI and then of course we will go to our configuration file save current configuration and quit RetroArch and then let's open it back up again and see what we get and look at that UI it takes a second to load here. There you go. This is the old school UI. Now this is this is probably what you'll see if you're using uh, a Raspberry Pi. And this is the much more stripped down, very basic UI. So if you have this UI, what's great about this one is it's very, very low in performance cost. But uh, of course, it looks very, 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 very plain. So now we're gonna switch it one more time to XMB. Go again to configuration file, which might be a little harder to find this time, right? <laughs> Save new configuration, and we're gonna quit RetroArch. We'll open it up one more time. And uh-oh, look at that. Didn't work this time. So let's try one more time and see what happened. Menu is still RGUI, so I changed it to XMB, configuration file. This is another thing. Uh, configuration from the settings menu. Uh, just as a good best practice, I like to always turn save configuration on exit on. So under settings configuration, always turn that on. Oh, you don't have to do this. Here, save current configuration. Now it says it's saved, so let's try that one more time. And that does happen from time to time. In fact, I have a retro arch implementation here that never saves any changes anymore so if i have to change if i have to change anything i have to manually edit the configuration file uh, which you'll want to avoid doing if you don't have to that's an older uh, retroarch implementation that i have all right so now let's go ahead and open up retroarch one more time and now you can see that it has changed and this is the ui that i'm most familiar with because this is the ui that i had way back uh, when i first downloaded it, like two or three years ago or whatever it was but I'm going to go ahead and change this again back to uh, GLUI, or rather um, Ozone. Is it Ozone? Ozone, I think. Because honestly, I really prefer that. And save configuration on quit is selected, but I'm still going to go ahead and just change it here in the configuration file anyway. And then we should have back the UI that we had before. And that's really all there is to it. This is not a big, huge, difficult, tricky thing to do, but just something that I know is a question a lot of people have, so I wanted to do a quick video addressing that. With that out of the way, I want to thank you very much for watching. Now, uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, I'm going to ask you to please subscribe to the channel, and here's why. I know subscribing doesn't do anything for you, but YouTube wants subscribers, a thousand subscribers on a channel before, they're, before they become eligible for monetization. I also need 4,000 hours of watch time in a month, which is uh, going to be a little harder to get. But uh, for now, 
if we can get that subscribers you know we're halfway there and once I have a thousand subscribers and I can start to get to the process of applying for monetization I can get a budget for the channel and then I can do some giveaways and cool stuff like that and some more interesting videos where I do like hardware and software installations so I would really greatly appreciate it if you would subscribe and watch my videos watch them to the end go back to my videos I have a lot of gameplay videos I have let's plays and I have a lot of scripted videos with history trivia and tech breakdowns for a lot of classic games and hardware. So check all that stuff out. Uh, do a thumbs up on the videos you like. Turn on notifications so you get a notification every time I upload a new video. And of course, share this channel and my content with your friends and uh, get my name out there. Help me out a little bit with getting that exposure so I can get the channel monetized and start doing more interesting videos. I wanna do a Raspberry Pi build. I wanna do a PS3 emulation build. I wanna do a Wii emulation build. I wanna do an Xbox emulation build. I wanna do all those things, but I need to have a budget for the channel in order to do that. So please help me out with that. And uh, that's all there is to it. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great rest of your day, evening, whatever it is. I never know how to end these videos. So I guess I'm just signing off and until next time, game over.